day, everybody. Hi. Howdy. Hello. Hello. Hey there, Charlie. What do you know? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's another day. Uh, yep. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing all right. It's a lovely day in Austin, so can't really complain. It won't be that way for very much longer, so we really have to capitalize on it while we can. Mm -hmm. Does the weather change fast in Texas? Kinda. Yeah, we yeah. have about a month where it's really nice. After that, it's just really hot. Yeah, I've heard about the heat. So the winter's not that winter's nice? Kind of, uh, it's kind of gray. Mm. I mean, I like it. A lot of people don't, though. Yeah. Um. All right. So, hi, Zakir. How are you doing? Yeah. All right. How are you doing, Patrick? Oh, hanging in there. Hanging in there so far. Cool. Kathy, hi. It's been a little while. Long time no see. Sorry, yeah. I missed the last two minutes. Two two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I missed the time zone. Oh okay. uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's no problem. Okay, so we're. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're in the writing phase here, and I just wanted to review with you. I, um, you know, last meeting, I said I was going to set up a an internal meeting to write together, but I just didn't get a chance to do that. So I just started taking it upon myself to, to write this, and I'm making pretty good progress. So uh, my thought is, after I get this uh, revision done, I'll post it on our uh, site and um, begin to get feedback. But in the meantime, I wanted to kind of show you the uh, uh, updated uh, approach and some of the writing um, we discussed last time or a couple of times ago about making sure that this is separate, but referencing fa the phase one surrogate, knowing that they're separate things, but um, no need to redo a lot of the verbiage that's in phase one. <clears throat> so I took that. This is, by the way, a review of what's in the phase one. And just so you all know, this is where we have the acoustical only hard drive surrogate. We use this reviewed the scope and overview of how to, of what it is, the problem we're trying to solve. Section three went across usage models. Uh, then the hardware requirements in section four. Section five, we had a measurement and communication process and then we had conclusions. So instead of redoing some of that, um, we did is just kind of referenced our previous uh, document and just added, you know, the flavor of what it means to be this combined surrogate, uh, as opposed to an acoustical only. So that's uh, it's much abridged uh, section two. I think it'll make it more concise and uh, easier read. Same thing with section three. We've already described the usage models in the in the previous paper. I did call out what we mentioned in our last meeting, that there are certainly cases whereby uh, transmitted vibration is suspected to be the dominant 
uh, it should be dominant um, disturbance. Then we get into section four, and this is where we begin to diverge. Um, where the previous paper we had only talked about the uh, its surrogate hardware and microphones and data acquisition system. We're calling out here that we're using the same microphones, microphone locations, and the data acquisition systems, but the structure and vibration change. So that's where we start going through this. Um, the, I basically took this language directly from what we had previously written, goes through what the accelerometer is and a rough cost for it. Plus, you know, for six of them, gives a cost of what that would be. Um, then we start to get into the actual structure of the surrogate itself. Um, and yeah, I just try to, I've been wordsmithing, trying to make it a bit more concise. You know, call out, of course, the same size, shape, and mass as a three and a half inch hard drive, references this um, specification, describes the three, three different parts of the surrogate, acknowledges that there's a range of masses. I didn't go into the, the reasons why, I just, because I, I suspect that everybody could have their own reason to recommend a different one. So I just said, we're just saying it's gonna be this one. Um, you know, we talked about the type of material, which is this aluminum. And then we talked about the range of um, measurement that we want to make. And then we start to get into the, uh, the next portions of it. So this is as far as I've gotten on the rewrite at this point. But before um, we move on, are there any comments, feedback about the approach being being taken here? Hey, Everett, I have one question. Yeah. So uh, you said to finish this up before getting reviews. Can anybody out of the HDD group do a review and suggest changes or are they limited to people who've signed the um, CLA? So anybody can suggest, you know, or, or say, hey, what you said there is unclear. Um, the actual writing, like the actual words used, that's where the CRLA comes in. But yeah, absolutely. Any any public may read through this and say, "I'm confused by what you wrote in that section." And it and could you try out a, you know, a different way of a, of addressing that? Okay, thanks. Sure. Any other comments? Thanks, Chris, for taking the. The first card at the draft, uh, it's a lot of work, I assume. Um, on the mass side, you know, we put a target of 680. I don't know how rigid that need to be. Uh, maybe later we can check what mass uh, individual companies are getting for their surrogate. I think we mentioned the target being 680. Um, yep, right here. And uh, the other comment is uh, we, we did look at uh, Jennifer's uh, recommendation on that sharp edge for the microphone cables. Uh, that will be taken care. We will okay. make it rounded here. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So as I said, um, I think, and by the way, I, I'm not meaning to leave anybody out as I go through this. It's just a bit easier to have one person start on it uh, or or a few people so we don't have cross talk on the edits. So I just started in on it. Um, I'll post this 
for edits or changes as soon as I get through the rest of it. What I, the approach I intend to take, as you can see, this is the raw language and uh, edits from our previous write-ups. What, um, as I update this, my request to you all will be, hey, if something is out of date um, or needs to be different, to just just write back to the to the group, you know what what's needed to be changed, and um, then those who've signed the CRLA can uh, make those changes in the document itself. And as you said, for example, Sakira, I, I fully anticipate that some of these drawings may be outdated too, and some may be still relevant. So I didn't want to change any that are still good to go. Yeah, there's very minor changes. So I think these are pretty relevant. And okay. are you going to assign some sections like the repeatability and the analysis portion to um, some other uh, uh, persons to write or? I'm gonna start with it, uh, okay. with what we have, because we have quite a bit. Um, again, if you look in, I'll show everybody where this is. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to share my screen so you can all see this. And it's my expectation that what you're about to see contains everything we need to write this document. So regardless of who it is, all the content should be here. This is what I'm using. And this is, I think, what everybody has used thus far. Um, if there's any content that's missing, or you know, there's a work stream that outputs something and it's not here, please up, please put it here. Because this is what I'm referencing. Um, and any other authors will be referencing these data. So I, I guess that's a, a good call out to you all. Um, is anybody on this call, Is do you know that, are, have you worked on something that should that should be updated here? Or do you feel like this shows the complete list of what we have? It's in the, by the way, it's in that link that I sent in the um, in the meeting invitation for today. Yep, that's good. Okay. I mean, only item I suspect may not be here. I do not know how important that is, was the original discussion that Daniel had on calibration. Uh, I do not know if we um, uh, went back to, uh, uh, if we are going to put anything on calibration uh, of the surrogate ad ad uh, in this um, paper. I would like to. Um, yeah, Daniel, from last time, I think what you're going to do was going to suss out some stuff that you weren't ready to share and other stuff that you were. Can you tell us the status of that? Uh, unfortunately, the status is even worse in that the lab lost my fixtures for calibrating this thing, so I have been unable to actually calibrate them. Um, but I do have the documents just detailing the process that would have been undertaken, and I thought I put that on here, but I guess I can go back and check. Yeah, would you please? Um, and then whatever your feel comfortable uploading here. That's what I'll reference in the calibration scheme. Yeah, I can do that, definitely. OK. Um, let me ask, so Kathy and Jennifer, were there was there anything that you wanted to have re represented in this folder here that you would like to make sure that it is put into the document that we're writing? Um, no more. I have seen my ch my chat ears are here. OK, excellent. Uh, maybe I have one more comment about the difference between uh, the accelerometers. I can upload uh, this video later. OK. Very good. Thank you very much. 
Um, anyone else? So, Bo, you'll notice that the writing that's in, what, uh, if you were, uh, whenever you joined the call today. I was. I was here from the beginning, Everett. Thanks. Yeah, so you, you will have noticed that uh, much of the writing is what you had contributed there, too. So I appreciate that. Yeah, obviously, it's been some time and subject to change. I think it's awesome that you have all of this collateral to draw from. I think it's a really good idea to take all that, and that way you've got the current, you know, content to draw from. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, and then Dave, I saw that you had uploaded your your document on the uh, on your most recent analysis. Yep, correct. Okay. Um, so, as I said. I'm gradually working through it, drawing on what's uh, what's in this folder to flush out the document. Uh, I'll post it in this folder. And then um, for the authors who are working on it, just, you know, at that time, please read through it and edit what's um, mistaken. It should be by the time you see it, it should be much more readable and in a, in a place where uh, you can quickly find your section and update it or, or, or change what I've written. Okay, um, so that that's the paper part of this meeting. What I wanted to go to next is a discussion of actual use cases. Um, so I heard you earlier, Zakir, that you reflected uh, feedback for um, some concerns around cables. Was there anything, uh, did anyone want to review some data they, they've they collected with the combined surrogate? Uh, get feedback on results they're seeing, concerns about the, the data they're seeing, impacts that might have a, on the design or the analyses. I'll just update you, Everett, that our team has built a couple of surrogates and we have just begun starting to use them. We just received our analyzer tool so we're in the process of getting comfortable with it. So we'd like okay. to calibrate it and happy to contribute those data if it's useful to add to the mix of other data others have collected in terms of consistency. I think that'd be fantastic. It's been oh, a long everyone. road. Oh. Sorry. No, go right ahead, go right ahead. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why I mentioned getting involved the last time, I, I think interpretation of the results is a very fruitful area to, to document and have people critique. Uh, that's where I'm coming from as a mechanical engineer and having done this for a number of years is when you look, what are you initially looking for? Uh, I know historically it's, it's we like a spec and if this peak goes over the spec or this total GRMS goes over the spec, but that's not necessarily the true picture of what this information can uh, talk about. So that, right. that's where I'm coming from. Uh, oh yeah. As far as yeah. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And, and in fact, that's, uh, that's why I'm particularly interested in the, the data that we get with the surrogate in real time as we write the paper. Um, so it sounds like we'll, uh, you know, you and Zakir, of course, have provided uh, several sets of data. Uh, so is Kathy and I provided data also from the combined surrogate. It sounds like Bo will have some soon. So um, I think it's still relevant, you know, the, the probably the last section that we can, the large portion of the paper is dedicated to how do you build this thing and how do you use it? But to the extent that we have examples of types of things we've seen in comparisons of data sets, 
uh, I, I think that'd be just icing on the cake if we can add that too. Okay, well, that's what I had to, to cover today. Is there, are there any other agenda topics anybody would, else would like to bring up? Uh, yes, regarding the uh, the representation of the vibration data, did we finalize what kind of uh, format um, is okay? I mean, I can share what we uh, I had shown before. Yeah, I actually was on mute. I was looking for my mute button, secure, but I was curious before we move on to that, and maybe it's related. Do we have a library of past results that Kathy and others have taken in a assembled data set? They should well, all is be. There a, is there a test calibration defined? You know, a de calibration test defined where, you know, we can record a given noise and see if we have affinity, you know, close integrity in what was captured. I well, can. Bo, you're, I think you're asking two two. Go ahead, Charlie. Questions here. One is, um, you know, a means for verifying the integrity of a surrogate, and the other one was uh, the availability of data that's been measured. Um, yeah, I'll respond to this. Yeah, the second please. one, um, uh, I think two months ago, um, I put together uh, some slides that compared the data gathered through multiple HDD surrogate units Great. Uh, built and used by various parties within the That's great. Group. I'm sorry I wasn't um, part of the audience. So, <laughs> um, it, yeah, you weren't there, I don't think, but um, I, I uploaded it to the to the shared uh, Google Drive. Okay. Um, Is it in that and, same folder you were pointing to ever? I'm not yes. sure. It is okay. Yeah, there's one. There's one data uh, correction that still needs to be made um, with respect to some Lenovo data. Um, I haven't uploaded that correction yet. So, but the you know, the purpose of that that slide deck was to to demonstrate what kind of repeatability. Uh, could be realized from uh, surrogate insertion to surrogate insertion into a into a chassis. Um, and uh, you know how what kind of repeatability could be achieved through sequential uh, measurements taken with the same insertion. Um, so it was just sort of a, a just a characterization of yeah, it's repeatability. Actually, yeah, it looks looks great. It, I, I'd love to review this. Yeah, yeah, the slide that I'm showing. This is the one you're referring to, Charlie. I think so. I can't believe it was back in October, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it goes. I mean, maybe, you know, time time was faster than, than I remember. Um, but yeah, if you there were a couple of. Uh, there were two. There are slides of uh, showing, uh, you know, column chart, clustered column charts with error bars. Um, maybe it's farther down, or maybe this is maybe it's, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, that's that's the processing that method that we uh, aligned on. Um, and oh yeah, here's the test. This is the test log that we aligned on. Is that the last slide? No. <laughs> Discussion slides. No, I think there's I think it's a different different presentation. Um, yeah, I thought it was back in January or so. 
Okay. Well, that was certainly relevant background, right? It's, oh, I, I found it here. Sorry. Yeah, Bo, um, you can you can look at the slide deck that Chris just showed, um, and read the data reduction method that uh, people like Dave Niss and Jennifer and Kathy Wang and Daniel Carey and I aligned on. Great. Yes, Everett, I found one that is at January 25th. Do you want me to share it or it's in the same folder? Sure, I did too. Okay. <laughs> Looks a lot like the one from October though, so. But uh, yeah, go ahead and share it if you don't mind. So again, you know, part, part of the intent is uh, as the paper is being written, I want to make sure this team is sharing data on what we're finding for the surrogate so that we can best talk about it with other teams. It looks like the same ones that you're dated uh, October, or at least the first page said October. Uh, the date Let's see. The uh, looks different. Yeah, that's October. Uh, Uh, so, Charlie, do you think the data is up to date here, or um, it doesn't uh, have those bar charts? I think yes, it is the old one. Yeah, I don't. I'd have to go to the. One. <laughs> I'd have to look myself. Um, I know I was. I know I uploaded it. Um, I know I presented it, but maybe what I should do is just have one slide deck that. Um, without the repetition across multiple slide decks. Um, let's see, do I have this bookmarked? Um, you can keep talking while I look. <laughs> uh, By the way, uh, um, uh, Bo, if, you, if your question uh, was specific to calibration, I think, I think that's what I heard. Um, yeah, well, that's yeah. certainly one of the areas I was interested in. Right? Yeah, one of the things we did do uh, earlier, uh, this is one slide, and also Daniel had that, done some work, uh, which maybe we can share later. But this is just a combo surrogate. We put a um, 20G shock in two directions, so just to see how what levels we see. Uh, this is mm -hmm. on a shaker. You used a shock and vibe yes. platform? Yes. I see. And the next plot, the bottom plots are, we put a, a, a known um, 1000 hertz uh, one GRMS. And you can see that the LBZ is putting out about 1.033 mm -hmm. RMS. Mm -hmm. so just a quick check if we had seen the expected levels of measurements. I see. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. And then the following pages, that's the uh, all the accelerometer data, the red graphs. Yeah, this yeah. is only okay. uh, some, some chassis, 2U chassis. And, and then this is recording what kind of noise? This is just uh, in, a, in some chassis with random fan or? Yeah, this is a fan. Let me see, there's a fan. Uh, yeah, just random fan noise. The fan, mm -hmm. I think one was, yeah, this is a full fan speed, yeah. Gotcha. So we are going to look at the six degrees of freedom. Uh, LW, the new convention was W is in the width axis, A is the mm -hmm. length axis, and Z is the, uh -huh. the normal Z direction. Yeah. yeah, I suppose part of what I had a curiosity about is have we had all the people who've built surrogates run the same exact test and then look at the variance between them? I sensed that's kind of where you were going, Charlie, but I might have misunderstood. Uh, we have, <laughs> that's a good question. There, to my knowledge, there's not, not been any round robin type of test in which the same platform and the same surrogate unit are are tested together 
what has been done is to test different surrogate units inserted into different platforms. Mm -hmm. That's the extent of which I'm aware. Yeah, it might be tough to settle on a single platform. Uh, so anyway, yeah, okay, I appreciate that. Thanks. So, so Bo, I think I think what Daniel's document describes are all the ways to calibrate the bias errors that are in a surrogate, uh, accounting for weight, accounting for location of the uh, mm -hmm. accelerometers, accounting for the sensitivities of the accelerometers. You know that the, the and that all is just uh, is similar to what Zakir has shown is you have to have a known input that you can control and that's the reason for having a shaker as part of that calibration process. Yeah, Dave covered it pretty well there, but yeah, the the shaker process is at least that we've kind of posited is very similar to what Zakir was showing earlier. So a known input on like in our instance a slip table measured against the response of the accelerometers and then coming up with correction factors based off of that great deal okay um just curious bo approximately what time frame do you think you're operating on before you'll be able to have some data? Say within the next month. Wonderful. Yeah, to the point that was that you made, I, it's typically challenging to coordinate uh, the round robin type of test um, just because we each have different systems available to us. Uh, it's not precluded. I mean, obviously the, the calibration is an extreme way of, of looking at that. Um, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. But I think, you know, as we, you know, as we proceed to, to write the paper, and as we proceed to use the surrogate, what I'd like to use this uh, this work stream for, uh, at least through publication of the paper, is comparison of those results and means of actually looking, is there a way we could conduct some form of round robin just to compare results? Not sure what that would mean yet, hmm. but you know, that I, I would like to brainstorm that a bit because hmm. um, I think that would be a helpful if if it's in time before the publication of the paper, fantastic. If not, you know, it could be an addendum. It could be another its own paper, etc. Um, yeah, but, it's really the most basic form of comparison I can think of that would give you immediate feedback on the variation between the ones that were built. And I know we took a lot of care with the design so that we did have consistency. And uh, I guess be the easiest way to verify, but maybe the most challenging to put together. Yeah, so I think if all of us can think about that, like what would be a way that we could run such a comparison test? Um, for the, our next meeting, let's come back with, with thoughts on that in addition to uh, whatever data and, and observations you have using the surrogate. By the way, Bo, I guess, uh, there's a little bit of a catch-22 here in that the paper's not done. So you, being that you're building your surrogate now and we'll be collecting data, you may be wondering, well, okay, what has this work group learned in how I should test and calibrate? That's so, kind of where I was sneaking up on. Yeah. <laughs> so so in, in the ideal world, the paper would be ready so you could use it. Oh, I see what you mean. So okay. um, why don't you help keep, I'm going to just ask you to help keep me honest. Um, as I'm collecting those pieces, what, I, I'm going to okay. ask if you can just, you and I can maybe collaborate because we could perhaps do it real time, meaning oh, that's amazing. you're literally yeah. a consumer of it. You we can are. tell me whether what, how we're assembling it even makes sense that you can follow it and give real time feedback like, I don't I know may, what you're talking. I may choose to draw in a colleague of mine who um, 
brings a very interesting experience to the table, unlike any I had come across, at least for acoustics before. He used to work in, uh, I think he calls them K-class attack submarines, that um, they learned how to do power spectral density and find sounds that were related to things that were trying to kill them, right? And so they got very good at deducing wheat from the chaff in the in the diagrams and they've you know they use different forms of visualization that we have found pretty interesting like the power spectral density charts that we're showing here they're really just kind of one snippet of time if you will uh this idea of a waterfall um, representation you know shows that over time and you know it's a bit like the uh the blip you see on radar, you know, in movies, that the uh, thing is getting closer, kind of a thing. You can, he, he's he's done some visualization work that uh, has helped my understanding of what we're looking at. It's almost like looking at that that power spectral density chart, right. the classic one that we have from the top, mm -hmm. like looking yeah. at it from the top down over time, and that's pretty interesting way to look at things. So he, he actually has. A different like third octave he's really questioned why we settled on that so it might want to actually bring him in and just have you and he have a dialogue about that you know he's okay. he's got a lot of interesting ideas and uh i'd like to put him to the test here perfect but anyway i appreciate your invite and i'd love to engage you on that i, I okay. think it's great that we can do that at the same time so thank you yeah you bet so where I'd like to close today with is uh, Jennifer, you had sent out some helpful uh, requests and observations in your surrogate. And I'd like to make sure we uh, we follow what, what you found. If I read what you wrote, it sounds like you had some issues with um, the connectors uh, I think you found the connectors need to be recommended to have uh, a certain type of interface or, or check the hardware requirement is what you're saying. Uh, I know that Zakir ad addressed the microphone cable, but did you, was there something else around the accelerometer that you wanted to share? I think what you're saying is the type of connector for the accelerometer. That's kind of what I understand from what you wrote. Is there anything else that you wanted to uh, clarify, Jennifer? Uh, I, uh, I, I think the uh, interface between the uh, cable connector for accelerometer is easy to lose. Right. So we need to pay attention to it before you eat. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, I just check two kind of uh, uh, keyboards for microphone and uh, accelerometer. I think uh, uh, the, the microphone connection, uh, connection is better than that of uh, uh, accelerometer. Okay. And I wanted to check with you, Sakir, when you read through so, that. Uh, so I just so I just want to uh, uh, suggest to uh, keep a part in our white paper. Yeah. To uh, to remind user to check the interface of all the device before the UE2 measure. Gotcha, perfect. Sorry, Everett, you had a question? Yeah, uh, it sounds like one of these, which is the microphone cable, you are able to capture within, I presume, the CAD. Is that what you were referring to earlier? 
Uh, yes. So what I think she mentioned was where the microphone cable comes out from that. I'll share uh, my screen here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here you go. Okay. Yeah. So the bottom picture, you can yep. see that the sharp edge and the slot where the microphone cables comes out. Uh, it makes sense to make it rounded so that there's yeah. less chance of any scraping or any damage to the cable. Okay. And it sounds like you uh, and Dave have reflected that in the in the latest CAD. Is that what you're saying? No, it will be taken care. Uh, uh, it's not yet done. We'll okay. Will okay. Gotcha. Later, yes. Okay. And then um, what you had said, Jennifer, and I just wanted to make sure I got this right. I think what you're saying is to make sure that the reader and the user uh, makes a good connection at the places where you put the blue ovals. Is that, is that what you, is, do I understand that correctly? Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, to Bob's um, uh, question, I can share one more item. If okay. You... So this is one of the things I've been looking at. Um, this is sort of a um, uh, NAS box, uh, WD NAS box. And I actually had put in a fan behind it, a normal chassis fan. And to create some sort of a reference source that can be moved around to see um, uh, exactly what, like a round robin test. Uh, this could be the control box, like, hmm. is that what you're thinking, Zakir? Maybe. Yes, yes. So first thing was, uh, uh, yes, it's just to give an idea of the dimension of the box. The fan is a typical chassis fan, one fan. It has two slots. And one of the slots has some holes where the cables can come out. And uh, yeah. Yeah, these are the cables comes out. So it's not made for this purpose, but this is the best I had, mm -hmm. had in hand to, to try this concept. So another thing I was looking at is actually uh, to see how um, how repeatable the data is. So mm -hmm. taking my, uh, the surrogate we have, maybe two of them, putting in and out and see if that data is repeatable. So if so it's a question. If, if that data is repeatable, then we can think of taking it outside for others to try it. That's so, okay. really a nice approach. I like that. Yeah. How much variance did you find run to run? I see like uh, three digits of significance, maybe some deltas there in the third digit. Did you find two yeah. digits of yeah. difference? Anywhere? I haven't really fully looked at the data. So we, I had a small control for the fan. So we had the fan running at multiple different RPMs. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I think um, uh, those better variance in, in higher speeds, of course, as suspected, yeah. and lower. Um, so yeah, so the few differences I have to check is how repeatable the data is, you know, and the uh, assuming that the fan exactly comes to the right RPM every time somebody turns the knob, things like that. Zakir, do you have a name for this just so we can reference in the future? I just call it reference box. Okay. Yeah, reference reference. It's source. the My Book Pro. I noticed. Is that yep. what it is? The My yep. Book Pro. The reference source. Yeah. Okay. It's the ZQ reference source. Um. Excellent. I. Yeah, I think this could be one of those uh, possibilities for. Uh, checking different uh, contributors. Um, service. I really like it. Uh, you know, either ship it around to each company or yeah. split the fan and show how you've attached it and, and everyone, everyone go buy one. I'm curious, of course, at what variation you'll find in production across my book pros, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you now you're starting to test the tester. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> give them feedback. Yeah, yeah and the disc like is basically a uh, source for both acoustics and vibration. Sure. You know, hey Daniel. Look here, did did you um did you reduce the data according to the procedure that that we aligned on in your spreadsheet that you showed a few moments ago? Uh no, actually this was done much earlier than the last discussion, I think. I, I didn't look at it recently. So this is not following your your um, template at all yet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Bo, it, you know, this round robin, um, it's certainly, certainly uh, valid to do. Um, you all might want to look at the results that we have. Um, yes, absolutely. To see whether whether the uh, repeatability is adequate for your purposes before the round robin test is completed, which will you know, certainly take months to, to do. Um, yeah. Show me, yeah, if you can point to the repeatability data and it's up there on the, the drive, I'd be happy to take a look. I'm sure it'll be good learnings for me. Yeah, what I did, thanks, Bo. What I did is I um I generated a PDF and uploaded it and deleted the, the PowerPoint. Um, so the the PDF has the the repeatability data gathered by multiple manufacturers, uh, starting on slide nine and following. Gotcha. What were you saying, Chris? Uh, yeah, on the. If it's possible, and as you're, you know, presumably finding hardware, et cetera, and checking out the calibration process, I guess my request would be if there's a way to, so calibration is one thing, right? That's where we put in a known source and you look at the output, right? Yeah. If there were a clever way to take a ca calibration devices, or something like that, and almost kind of simulate a, a um, what we're talking about here, like a, a controlled input. That'd be interesting. I'm just, I'm just mentioning that. I'm I I don't have I don't know what that would be, but I'm just saying, as you, if and as you look at at the calibration means, if you happen to come up with an uh, an idea that follows that line of thought, I'd appreciate it if you could. We had considered sinusoidal sweeps generated by a tone generator right? Uh, in both amplitude and frequencies and trying to measure the response that we measure and then, you know, try to use that as a tool. Um, you know, I'll let you know how that goes, but. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, particularly where, where I found there to be um, challenges in like comparing enclosure to enclosure is that the uh, acoustical portion can be difficult to reproduce. It's just there can be a lot of variation there. So anecdotally, I'm just saying that. Yeah, it'd be reasonable to take that under advisement. All right. Well, before we close, are there any other anybody else have any anything they want to uh, to bring up, uh, suggest, concerns, etc. Hey, Zakia. Um, sorry, I just want to know uh, what you have found uh, through your uh, standard calibration fixture. Um, do you think uh, if if the fist uh, if the surrogate is put into a standard uh, standard source, um, and the variation will will be stable, is that your finding or so? What's your conclusion through the calibration box? Uh, you mean the calibration in the shaker? 
Uh, no, you um the the box uh the CQ CQ the sauce. My, uh, the my book. Oh, oh, the, my book. Okay. Oh, by yeah. The way, yeah. Um. Okay. So what we did was uh, it's actually not uh, the my book uh, itself. We actually put a sort of a um. Uh, uh, So this is the uh, so the my book is modified. So my book has a more of a smaller fan. So this is the fan from the uh, uh, I think this is a uh, one of the standard chassis fan. Uh, so there is no uh, sorry Jennifer um, uh, I didn't understand the question. Uh, this is not a calibration. This is just a uh, typical chassis input, right? So the idea is to see if I take the surrogate in and out, do I always get the same level? And the, th there's a small knob here where I'm actually adjusting the fan speed. So I'm having three different fan speeds to see if I can repeat it. So the idea is what, whichever location I send this to will be repeating the same levels. Yeah, so. yes, I'm Kathy. Yeah, and I absolutely understand your solution. Uh, I just want to know uh, what's your finding, um, what's your conclusion through the data you collected from this box instead of uh, a real uh, server chassis? Okay, the, the acoustic levels are closed. Uh, on the vibration side, the way the drives get mounted, uh, there are some rubber pads I had to adjust because I found out that uh, it's when that when the latch goes on, there might be some kind of sort of twisting. So I did not have a good repeatability in the beginning. So I had to adjust um, uh, when the latch closes where the rubber grommets are pressing against the, the drive to get a better repeatability. So it is still a work in progress. It's not concluded yet. So I had, right. I had some difficulty getting repeatability in the first phase because when it was the latch was closing, I think the drive was not being pressed in the same way every time so uh mm. so, let me... so uh, am i understanding right so you are expecting uh a better variation a solution uh variation uh conclusion from this box but you um but you are uh scheduling more work to to do this is that right exactly so um my idea was, I was thinking the same way that we need to somehow get a measure of how each of the surrogates, not only like even WD has the different surrogates in different locations. I do want to get an idea of how every location measures uh, against a reference. And so, and uh, if you see the latch which closes, this latch, how it closes can affect the variability, not in the acoustic, but in the vibration. And this, uh, so uh, I had to adjust how the closing happens to get better repeatability when uh, we measure the vibration. Is, is, does it make sense, uh, Kathy? Yes. yes, thank you. So that's pretty interesting. So, uh, so yeah. Here, what vibration metric displayed the variability from according to the way the door was closed? Sorry, Charlie, was it a question? Um, which vibration variable displayed the variation sensitivity or the sensitivity to the to the the way the door was closed? Yeah, it was mainly the rotation on vibrations. Broadband, narrow band, overall. Everything? <laughs> uh, no, uh, I was primarily looking at the broad, uh, the overall first. Yeah. So the, so the variability in the overall as well. Yes. Well, uh, it, it got better. So, um, yeah, uh, when so you can see the one rubber mount here, when I put a second one on the bottom and the two closes against the drive in one side, then the, it improved. Uh, but I haven't looked at uh, all the data yet. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I don't have any conclusion and uh, to give you an, any idea of why the variability lies at this point. And 
uh, this is different from a typical uh, server chassis where you know um, well uh, actually yeah, I take it back I think depending on the chassis that could be different ways it is being getting latched right now yeah this will be much quieter than a lot of servers for example uh -huh. but as a yeah. as a control right that's really what we're after is it? some control mechanism and now and you said that you had varied the the PWM of the fans, right? The fan speed to get different points of uh, measurement. Yes. So I did not use the fan that came with the MyBook. Right. So, Understand. So, so that's why the the levels should be pretty similar to, I believe, what you see in a chassis. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's close enough to the drives that you know it makes a it's a reasonable proxy and a decent. You know what I like about it is it's compact. It's not very expensive. It seems like everyone could come by one, and you know, if it works, we could almost, you know, rally around this as a point. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should keep in mind you're you're sharing your screen there, secure. You might want to. Oh, sorry. Um. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good starting point for yeah for one point of, of a poten potential round robin. Um, but as I said, let's, uh, th that's fantastic. Let's pick that up next time. Um, I expect um, for the, at least the next draft of the paper to be ready and, you know, starting point edits in. Uh, and then it sounds like if things go to plan, Bowie, you'll have some data to share next time. Um, so, yeah, I, I, as we continue through the publication, I, I think that meeting monthly makes sense to compare data and to share our findings. And, and as we've discussed today, the potential of the round robin. So um, I suggest we continue on those paths. Great. Okay. Hey, it's good to hear your voice again, Bo. Well, thank you. Yeah, and it's Pre good to hear everybody's voice. I, I appreciate working with you all. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, I know it's uh, sorry, early. I've been What's that? Oh. I said, sorry, I've been scarce. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I know it's early for some of you. I know it's a strange time of day for other folks. So thank you very much for joining in. Uh, we'll meet a month from now and anticipate um, progress on the areas we talked about. Thank you, Everett. All right. Yeah, thank you all. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rob.